Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we're going to paint a brand new seasonal flower that I've never painted before and I, I pronounce it a bit funny as well, a fritillaria, a snake's head fritillaria. You'll recognise them. Uh, let's grab our paints and get started. So I'm excited to have a go at this because it's a new one for me. Um, so we've just drawn in some stems there and from that I've got a little curve to sort of show me where the flower is going to be. And I'm gonna go straight in with a bit of yellow ochre that I'm gonna dilute down a bit and just put a little bit of Payne's Gray into. We're not, we're not messing about with this one today, actually. We're gonna go straight in to painting the flower, which is the, the key bit So I'm painting in the petals there, they sort of arch up a little bit at the top, so a little bit boxy at the top. I'm just going to focus on the petals at the front of the flower, we'll do a second one here. And we're going to be using the, the dampness of the page to paint in a sort of watercolour version of the very distinct uh, snakehead fritillaria. fritillaria. Um, And we're going to use Alizar and Crimson for that. I'm going to bring that over here with a larger brush, much more sensible. So these are just settling into the page, still quite wet. And I'm going to take a bit of Payne's Grey again. That's gone very purple, so I'll add a bit more Alizar and Crimson to it. That's a good colour. Now, they have this amazing sort of checkerboard pattern on the petals. And what we want is for the petal to be damp-ish, but we want it to be, so we want it to be wet that the colors run like so, but we want it to be dry enough that they don't run completely adrift. So this is just a central line down each petal. The petal has a sort of ridge down the middle of it. And now what I'm going, I'm actually, I've decided I'm going to do it in sort of diagonal blobs like that, little dots. And I think that works really well. So just dabbing the colour. You can see it's starting to dry out, don't worry about that, we can sort that out. So what we can do is just take a slightly wet brush and we'll just blend those into the bottom there and in turn we're wetting the page and we can allow those colours to dry and we'll just get this in here and it's all going to dry quite a lot lighter but that's fine We're all going to have slightly different drying times depending on where we live in the world and the climate, the time of day, the type of paper you're using. There are lots of variables, so this might take a few goes. Uh, but for now, 
we are going to sort of let those settle. I'm so pleased with those. Like, I think that that looks really cool. Um, and we can start looking at the stem. Now, there is a bit of that purpley colour that resides in the stem. Um, but I'm first going to get my uh, green gold and sap green mixed up because what we do have on these stems is some lovely leaves, really long, sort of languid, curling leaves. And I'm actually going to pop those in first. They tend to live just sort of, they unfurl backwards. Where the, where the uh, stem kind of starts to bend over and then you do get a few coming up as well. I think that looks like a rather nice composition actually so I'm going to leave it at that and now for the stem I'm going to just mix together some of that red, uh, the claret colour into the green and I just need to be sort of mindful about what's going to bleed into what and what I'm happy to bleed into what. There's all sorts of activity going on outside today so uh, the dogs might have something to say about that in a minute. <laughs> Hopefully they'll be quiet, they know it's a filming day. Okay, and I'm going to bring some more green into the stem as we travel further down. Okay, so you can see that rather nice transition of colour and then I will just add a little bit of sap green into the top. So I'm now going to paint in the, the second stem, obviously allowing for the other colours we've got. Um, I can let everything dry and then paint it over the top. Right, so we've got our stems painted in and now what I'm going to do is actually go back into the flower with a bit more um, a bit more of the alizar and crimson and start to sort of define this petal a little bit more so it's got this very distinct sort of ridge down the middle we just want to make sure that we don't lose any of that lovely pattern we created So if we pop a bit of colour in then just be sure to blend away from it with a bit of water on your brush. It can also help you sort of get that slightly boxy top. So you can see I'm just painting in a little something of petals in the background. Well, 
we can now have a think about those. So I'm just using firstly a little bit of the yellow ochre mix that I had. And I'll get some of the stem mix just to get some of that darkness up in there. So do that again, so a bit of the yellow ochre mix, get the petal shape, get the point, water to fill up to the top, and a little bit of alizar and crimson. Then a bit of that shadowy stem mix as well. Just add a few dashes. When I say dashes, I mean dots, don't I? And then we'll just do that on the other flower. To finish off, we are going to add some extra detail and darkness to our leaves. So, which one? We've got this one in front. So we'll. Just use the dark green to just define them a little bit more. So the green is sap green mixed with Payne's grey. And I'm just using a size zero brush to paint a bit of it on. And then I'm going to take a four tenths brush to get a bit more of the Payne's grey in there. I'm just using a little bit of it for a bit of shadow underneath the stems. And there you go, there is a snakehead fritillaria for you. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a massive thank you to our patrons because their support enables us to keep creating videos like these that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed this, then hit the like button and comment below to let me know how you got on with that one. And of course, if you never want to miss another video, then hit the subscribe button and the little notification bell, and we'll see you again next time. Bye.